Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Williams. Do you feel that our nation is headed in the wrong direction? Do you feel that somehow we have lost our way? We have forgotten the things that made America great. We have forgotten the principles upon which this nation was founded. At Parkway Assembly of God, we believe it's time to return to the Bible, the real founding document of this nation. We believe that Jesus Christ is the answer and the only hope for America. This morning, praise the Lord, we're going to speak to you on the power of prayer. The power of prayer. This is going to be an awesome day. This is going to be an awesome day. Praise the Lord. God is going to minister to you. Amen. Turn with us to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. We're going to read three verses. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. Every one of us should pray that. Every preacher, every Christian, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is on his throne. Praise the Lord. Prayer is the key that unlocks God's grace and power. Prayer is the key. All of the resources of God are available to those who pray. Amen. Now, did, did you get what I said? All of the resources of God are available to those who pray. What are the resources of God? Well, He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He made the stars. He made the universe. He crafted all of those in synchronization and perfect harmony. He made the whole thing. He spoke and worlds came into existence. He holds the mountains. Job can't go into this, but Job said, he told Job, he said, Job, where were you when I held the mountains in the palm of my hand? Where were you when I held the oceans? Where were you when I told the lightning bolt how it comes down and goes back up? I don't remember you being there, Joe. This is the God with all of his resources that are all available to you when you pray. They're all available to you. We need to put on the whole armor of God and we need to attack the enemy. We don't need to sing, hold the fort, for I am come. No, we need to attack the enemy. We need to attack the gates of hell shall not stand against the church triumphant. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. It's not overcoming God's reluctance. A lot of us think that God's a short order cook. We, we, many of the charismatic vein says, well, if you'll say A and you'll say B and you'll say C, then poof, it's there. It doesn't happen that way. God's not running your errands. You don't tell him, well, this is what I want. Okay, tomorrow you have it. Prayer is getting your will, 
getting your wishes, getting your desires in tune with God's plan and God's purpose and God's heart and God's mind. Many people say, Donald Gray Barnhouse one time said, prayer doesn't change anything. He was saying that to get his congregation's attention. What he was really saying is prayer changes you. Prayer changes you. You pray and God needs to mold you and make you and change you and work in you and your prayer activates all of this and it works. Now it does change other things but primarily it is to change you. Prayer is being submitted to the plan and the purpose of God, being molded and transformed into His image. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First, prayer is essential to victory. Prayerlessness is sin. 1 Samuel 12, verse 23. He says, God forbid that I should sin against God by ceasing to pray for you. God forbid that I should sin against God. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's a great verse. That's one of my whole fasts. Men ought always to pray. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't become hopeless. But trust in God. Trust in God. Why should we pray? I mean... We should pray because God commanded it. God commanded us to pray. He said pray without ceasing. But we should also pray because it changes us and it changes our enemy and it defeats the enemies of God. That's why we pray. That's why we call upon God. Jeremiah 33 and 3. He says call unto me. And I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that ye know not. When we pray, things we've never dreamed could happen take place in the spirit world and in our physical world. They take place. He said, things you've never dreamed, I will give unto you. Prayer is the only way to get God's power released into your life. It really is. It is the only way. You know, as powerful as God is, as mighty as He is, as awesome as He is, let me tell you what He can't do. He cannot answer a prayer that has not been prayed. He cannot answer a prayer that has not been offered. When you pray... You tap into the supernatural world through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can pray with supernatural intelligence that goes beyond the knowledge of man. You can know things in the Spirit that you cannot know any other way. You can see things you wouldn't otherwise know. Romans 8, 26 says the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, what? When you don't know, when you don't have the, the, the intellect, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Praise the Lord. Matthew 7 and 8 says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Can you get that in your mind? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's in the name of Jesus Christ 
of Nazareth. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. We say, where's our power? We don't seem to have the power. Where's your prayer? You don't have the prayer that you used to have. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. In Acts chapter 4, 31, it says the early church, and when they prayed, the place was shaken with the power of God. Not an earthquake, but with the power of God. That's the kind of shaking I'd like to see happen. With the power of God shaking this house and shaking this people. Jesus prayed all night. He did. And the Bible says, and after this came signs and wonders and miracles. A good illustration is the 17th chapter of Exodus. Old Duke Amalek, the Amalekites, they came against Israel. They came to destroy them. I could tell you how they attacked them in the rear. They attacked the weak, da-da-da, all this sort of thing. But the, but the simple point of the story is that they attacked them and Joshua went out to do battle. Joshua went out to do battle. And Moses got on the mountain. And Moses lifted his hands up to the Lord, apparently at the Lord's direction. And as long as his hands were up, Israel was winning the battle. It was. His hands are up. Israel's winning the battle. Anybody know when you hold your hands up a long time, you get tired? Have you tried holding them up? You say, oh, that's easy. In a few minutes you go, oh. He got tired. He dropped his hands. The Amalekites started winning. He put his hands back up. Israel's winning. He drops them back down. The Amalekites are winning. Aaron and her, one gets on each side. They each grab an arm. And you know what that is? Supporting one another in prayer. Supporting one another in prayer. They held his arms up. And did you know what? Israel won. He even had to sit down on a stone, if you read it. He got tired. It lasted for hours. But Israel won because he persevered. And you know what God told him? Read, you read it for yourself. He said, I'm going to destroy the Amalekites. First thing, I'm going to wipe them out. Second thing, get this. He said, we're going to do battle with the Amalekites in every generation. Well, how are you going to do that if they're wiped out? It is a type of Satan attacking God's people and God showed them that the answer to victory is through prayer and waiting upon Him with His hands uplifted. It was a signal that in prayer is the victory, and the victory is won through prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. His hands were uplifted. Secondly, got to hurry. Secondly, we need to listen to God. Listen to God. And you will hear, you will hear what God is telling you. Thirdly, this is obvious, is it not? We need to pray in faith. We need to pray in faith. Faith in who? In an all-powerful God. All of the resources of God are available to those who will pray. The psalmist said, I will hope in the Lord. I will hope in God. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let a double-minded man not think he's going to receive anything from the Lord. Matthew 21, 21, he says, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall say to this mountain, 
be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. It shall be done. Faith does not demand miracles. Now, I don't know what you think, but faith does not demand miracles. But faith creates an atmosphere in which miracles happen. It creates the atmosphere. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We need to take every thought into captivity. You know that? If, if you're praying, you're praying in faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. says, take every thought into captivity. How do you do that? How do, some people go crazy. They, they can, a guy called me, recently, a few months ago, and he had been to the doctor. The doctor's office called him and said, we need you to come in. We want to talk to you. He said, they've called me. They want me to come in. I know it's cancer. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got all, all the da-da-da-da, and, and, and I may have cancer, and, and, and his mind is running. I said, you don't know that. Stop thinking that. Stop Stop speaking that. Don't say, I've got cancer. Don't speak that. He said, oh, but pastor, pray for me. I said, I will. But don't speak that kind of stuff. They got there and they wanted to talk to him about his cholesterol. <laughs> Wasn't his cancer. He didn't even have cancer. We let our minds run wild. Oh, what am I going to do? What, what about this? What am I going to do? That's what the devil says to you. What are you going to do? 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 And you're saying, oh, oh, don't let your mind run wild. Take every thought into captivity unto Jesus Christ and say, I believe God and I will live with God. Quickly, number four. Number four. The words that you speak will determine the level of your faith. Did you know that? The words you speak will determine the level of your faith. The Bible says the power of life and death are in the tongue. The power of life and death, that's Proverbs 18, 21. You know, ten spies went into the promised land. They came out and they said, oh man, they said, there are giants in the land. We were like grasshoppers compared to them. They are warlike people. They were terrible. We'll never, we'll never be able to conquer the land. It's, it's hard. And you know, you know what's contagious? You know what's contagious? Negative thinking. Oh, all the people cried all night. The whole camp, over a million or two people, they're all crying. Oh, no, we can't do it. Oh, that's horrible. You know, there were two guys. They said, this is our inheritance. God has promised us the land. Let us go up at once in the power of God. Let us conquer the land. We are more than conquerors. Let us go and conquer the land. And you know what? All of those people who were saying, oh, we can't do it, we can't do it. You know what? They didn't. None of those who said, we can't, they didn't do it. The only two who got into the promised land were Joshua and Caleb. They said, we can do it through God. It's our land. It's our promised land. And God has promised this unto us. What you say, what you say will come to pass. Well, I lost this thing again. What you say will come to pass. When you say, no, we can't, that's exactly what happens in your life. That is exactly what happens in your life. 
Are you robbing your heart of faith? Rather than speaking words of discouragement and defeat, we should speak words of hope and life. We should say, we are more than conquerors through Christ. We could say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You say, but, but I'm losing all of this. God can give it back to you tenfold. He can do it through his word and through his power. He is able to do a miracle in your life. He can do it this morning. He can start a process that will result in your benefit to him. Praise the Lord. God is able. God is able. I'm going to have to skip over to bring this to a close. You know, Abraham built an altar. You know, he built an altar. And he built this altar. He puts a sacrifice on it. He steps back. And then some birds came down. Some vultures said, hey, we can get that. They came swooping down. They were going to steal his sacrifice. And they were going to go off with it. And Abraham says, no, you're not. He gets his cane and he's swatting at the birds. Woo, woo, like Hank Aaron. I'm going to get rid of this bird. But Satan will steal your sacrifice. He will. He wants to stop you from fasting. He wants to stop you from praying. He wants to stop you from sacrificing. How does he do it? I can't tell you all of the ways. If there's hidden sin in your life, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If there's unforgiveness in your life, unforgiveness. I don't, you say, well, yeah, that's everybody but those two people. They really hurt me, and I'm not forgiven. No, everybody, everybody, no matter what they've done, unforgiveness will steal your prayers. What about your family, husband and wife? Pray together. Peter says that your prayers be not let. What is let? It's a tennis term. It means it hits and falls down. It falls right over the net, hits the net, and it falls. It's a let. That means your prayers will not reach their mark because you must believe in God. Let me close with this story. Second Chronicles, you know it well, Jehoshaphat. He had a huge army come against him, numerous kings. They all joined forces and they came against him. Jehoshaphat in Israel. If you'll look at that chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, you can see the verses there. The first thing Jehoshaphat does is he calls for prayer and fasting. He says, everybody in the whole nation, fast. And then he says, look at this vast army that's coming against us. He said, we don't have a chance. We can't even fight with these guys. Have you got something in your life that does not allow you to have any chance? That is out of your control? You can't fight with it? You, you can't, maybe it's physical, maybe it's financial, maybe it's something else. You, you just can't, you can't do anything. Jehoshaphat said, we can't do anything. We're, we're at your mercy. He said, oh God, we don't know what to do. Have you ever been in that shape where you don't know what to do? If you're not now, you will be one day. You will be. You just don't know what to do. He said, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Wow, what, what a blessing. I don't know what to do. But my eyes are on you. And you know what God did? God sent a guy in and said, have no fear. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. 
For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is God's. And you know what happened? Nothing. The armies came. They're waiting for the earth to open up and swallow them. <laughs> Nothing happens. The armies come. They're saying, oh God, the angels are going to come down any minute and get them. The angels didn't come down. They have to go out to fight. They get their army together. They go out to fight. They got their weapons. But Jehoshaphat says, wait a minute. Let's put the singers in the front. Can you imagine the singers? What? You're going to put us in the front? Let's, let's go to the back. Let, we'll sing while they fight. We'll, we'll dance and sing and they can fight. No, Jehoshaphat said, put the singers in the front. And the singers all got in the front. And the battle started. But then, all of a sudden, it says, when they began to sing and praise God, that God swooped down and destroyed the enemy and gave Israel a great victory that they could not understand. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. You see, it may not come the way you thought. It may not be like when Sennacherib, he laid the letter out. He laid it on the altar. He said, look what this king said about you. And during the night, 186,000 Syrians died. And when they got up the next morning, they said, my goodness, what happened to that Assyrian army? They're all dead. Didn't happen that way. But when they began to pray, can you praise God in the middle of trouble? Can you praise God when things aren't going right? Can you begin to say, blessed be the Lord who has brought me out and has delivered me. Praise the Lord. God is on my side. Can you say that? Can you say that? Can you say, God is on my side? Let's all say it together. God is on my side. If God is for you, then who can be against you? You cannot be defeated as long as you pray and you fast and you believe God and you claim the promises of God. God will bring you through. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you would like to help us keep this program on the air, please send your very best gift to Parkway Assembly of God, 5191 Eisenhower Parkway. For more information, go to parkwayassembly.com.